I think really early on, I think not only myself, but I think even an audience, movie going audience saw something special and and puss somewhere in between him first appearing on screen and then pulling out his giant eyes. It was, uh, it was just too seductive to pass up, too manipulative a thing. Um, and he was just always intriguing to me, you know, and he always had this cool history, you know, st he'd been everywhere and done everything, he had his uniform, and it was just begging the question of where did he come from, you know, what's his story? So, uh, it's such a dynamic, such a big character. <laughs> I've been, I've had cats, I've personally had cats, I don't have any right now, but yeah, I've spent plenty of time around cats, especially the last three years making the movie, but a lot of cat owners also contributing to the film. Uh, I think we've looked at every possible YouTube video cat reference download you could find, you know. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah, we've all lived with cats, and you know, and it's such an important part of the movie. You know, obviously the lead is a cat, but to get, you know, that sort of that that real, those real cat moments that I think everyone can relate to. It just took a lot of a um, lot of time and dedication and effort from the animators. You know, because they are they they communicate so much with their just their body language and. And uh, there's so many cats in the film that do not speak, so it was imperative, you know, that they move just right. And and even even having that with our with our main performers, with Salma and with Antonio, you know, that they're always they're such strong characters, but there's always something feline about them, you know. And at a moment's notice, you know, Puss will just chase a light on the floor, you know, or he'll just the way he drinks his milk. It's just like little details that that. Um, are always about his true nature, you know. It, it's like working with Puss in Boots, really, <laughs> because they're the same. They're the same person, cat, animal. Um, Antonio is so passionate about the film, and is such a big believer in the film, and and uh, and an inspiration. I mean, he's inspiration for. Uh, the the style of filmmaking we chose, you know, he's an inspiration for the story and you know knowing that this 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 character that was a side character we could we could give him and it was going to be a funny film it was going to be adventurous and fun but but we also knew that you know we can give this character a real uh, dramatic story you know give him give him some sense of loss you know that that he has to he has to overcome in this movie and, and we knew the character could support that uh, which I think is key I think that's what makes the film special is the there's the brotherhood story in the movie between uh, the very natural brotherhood story between a cat and an egg, you know. But if that story doesn't work, um, I don't think the film does. He is um, orphaned, and he grows up in an orphanage with Puss in Boots. They're at a very young age, they become very good friends. Um, Puss is really attracted to Humpty's his mind, you know, he's a dreamer, and he has big plans of one day getting them both out of this orphanage and, you know, and making it big. You know, finding the goose that lays the golden eggs and being set for life. Um, and Puss feels protective of him, and, you know, Humpty's an outcast, you know, because he's an egg and he can barely move. He really can't get around, so Puss is his physical arm, and they, they share this really incredible bond when they're younger. But as they get older, they grow apart. And there's a horrible betrayal that takes place that turns into a revenge story from Humpty. Um, but ultimately, that, that brotherhood is, is redeemed in the end. Um, I thought it was important that we have a great character, a strong character, and uh, that he can support his own world, and he should. It should. Everything about this movie should be a reflection of him and just him. And uh, and there was so much material that we could we could derive from just knowing that we have this epic, larger than life figure, you know, uh, who li who's from a different world. He's from a different place. So everything about the place should be different and should be unique to him. I don't I don't know that there's um a real secret to it, 
you know, there's no, there's certainly no formula or approach that we take other than we know we're making a family movie. Um, we try to just come up with and tell the best, most compelling story possible. I mean, that's always our goal. And, uh, and then lastly, we want to make a movie that we would want to go see, you know, that would entertain us if we went to the theater. So, you know, if all those things happen and work out the right way, I think you've got a movie that spans generations. I think it helps create a, an experience you can't get any other way. And particularly when you're creating a new world and something that has a very unique look and feel. And once again, this, the, you know, the movie that we're going to make based on this character, it's going to be exciting. It's going to have action and adventure. And it's going to be a really active camera. It's going to be colorful. Um, that just lends itself to 3D. Um, so at that point, you just use it as a storytelling tool. That's all, you know, just so we can experience this world uh, through Puss in Boots' eyes. And it becomes then a really, this immersive experience. You know, I think the 3D on Puss in Boots uh, worked out really well. I think it elevates, it elevates the story. It's the best format to see this movie in. You know, there were, so, there were so many sort of technical challenges um, that we had to overcome. Um, but we had such good people working on them. Even if they were working on those challenges for years, they, they, they overcame all of them. It really always comes down to uh, telling a good story once again. And I think that was the biggest challenge for us, was, was making sure that the emotional story uh, made sense and was moving. And that's something you work on until the very end, and you're always perfecting. Because if, if you don't have a good story, um, all the pretty pictures and the excitement and the color and the sound, it all um, falls flat, you know. It, it's the story that's going to make everything memorable. He had a, he had a strong influence. He was a great, he came along in a really sort of faded way, you know. It just, I mean, it felt like he almost like fell into our laps. Um, and. Uh, and became an executive producer almost overnight, having just by chance seen the film and, and wanting to work on it. You know, he asked us, you know, I would love to be a part of this. And so suddenly we had this um, sort of godfather for the movie, a guardian for the film, and someone who, who was very, uh, he was very clear. He's like, I don't want to fall in love with the movie, so keep me away from it. You know, keep me far away from it, but include me, but keep me away. So we would, we would just, we had this great consultant and on all levels, though, it was, you know, we'd show him artwork, he'd react to it, we could, we could take him to editorial if we were stuck, he would help us. It was like having, it was like going back to having the greatest personal film school you could imagine, and, and just helped push us creatively in, in, in places that we may have been going or weren't quite going, and it was great for the film. I think it was good for Guillermo, too, because it just sort of, you could feel his energy. I think he, he loves to be around creative people, and it, it just keeps his mind nimble.